Yo, Armando Baker out here. It's Luke May. This is Tyler Hintz, bro. University of North Carolina. This is North Carolina. I just want to shout out my boy J Bear underscore YT. J Bear underscore YT. This Carolina family, baby. Go Heels. Go Heels. What's up, boys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are reviewing the game between the number 19 North Carolina Tar Heels and the Brown Bears. Let me tell you guys what a game this was. I watched it from start to finish. I was quite impressed offensively from both teams. I thought they both put up really good efforts, especially in the first half. It was just back and forth time and time again between these two teams. North Carolina could not stop Brown to save their lives, and Brown couldn't really stop North Carolina to save their lives. So it was really entertaining a game overall. Uh, I really enjoyed that. So let's see here. Um, so North Carolina now 2-0 and on the season. Brown now 1-1, and but good credit to them. That's probably the, I don't know, based on what I saw, I'd have to say that's the best Ivy League team because Carolina didn't really struggle uh, on the defense. More, They were better on defense than you would think is what I'm trying to say. Brown just did a really nice job of hitting open shots. Um, so let's see here. Game uh, cast, game flow chart here. As you can see, really close to testing game. Carolina just barely getting that at the end there. Win probability started 93.2% for Carolina. Brown had it for a while. They had that advantage for a while, but Carolina did end up winning it. Let's go over here to team stats. And like I said, great shooting performance for both teams. Last five minutes of the game was a little bit off for both teams. But outside of, like, without that last final, final five minutes, these percentages would be like 60% for each team. But 50 point. 7% for Brown, 51.6 for Carolina on overall field goal percentage. 3-point percentage, 36.8 for Brown, and 42.9 for Carolina. That's a great sign. 9 for 21. RJ Davis was the majority of that. He was on fire tonight. We'll get to him in a minute. Free throw percentage, 66.7 for Brown and 75% for Carolina. We did out-rebound them by 9 points. And, excuse me, 9 rebounds and 3 on the offensive glass. Uh, we led in assists, they led in steals, and we tied in blocks, turnovers. Brown did have the advantage there. Fouls, yeah, Brown did have a lot of foul trouble tonight. If Without that foul trouble, they had a legit chance of winning this ball game. So it's really tough for them. Uh, some of those were a couple questionable fouls in there, but I think overall they were fair calls. But um, Lutter's lead for Brown was eight. Lutter's lead for Carolina was also eight. Now let's go over here to box score and talk about the player of the game who, in my opinion, is R.J. Davis. Now, don't get me wrong. Armando was fantastic. Like, let's not get it twisted. Armando, you could easily make the argument he was player of the game. But R.J.'s threes. We don't win this game without R.J. Davis hitting the three-point ball. And, yes, we don't win this game without Armando Baycott either. But down the stretch, R.J. Davis was the most clutch player on the court. Nine for 17. Uh, two for two from the free throw line with six assists as well. Really spreading the, the ball 26 points in total. Armando Baycott finished with 22 and 10. A double-double for him with an assist steal on two blocks. On 10 for 11 shooting. Really good uh, bounce back game from Armando where he had foul trouble in the last one. And again, this is the game. I'm not really going to like stop you from making that argument, but either way. Uh... Dawson Garcia got to start over Brady Manic, which I thought was a little bit interesting. 7.6 boards and a steal for him on 3 for 7 shooting. Caleb Love, 13 points with uh, 5 assists on 3 for 9 shooting. And Leaky Black, 7 points, 4 boards, 3 assists. On And Leaky had a couple big shots in there as well. Onto the bench, Brady Manic got a ton of bench minutes there. It was really a true seven-man lineup tonight just because it was so close. Um, we tried to get some other guys mixed in, but it didn't really work out because Brown was hanging around. Onto the bench, Brady Manick, 14 points, eight boards off the bench with two blocks and an assist as well. Didn't shoot very efficiently. Did have eight for nine on free throws, though. And Kerwin Walton was the seventh man off the bench. Um, five points and two boards and a block for Kerwin. Justin McCoy, Anthony Harris, and Dontre Styles also got very few minutes in this game, um, but it was really crucial, and Huber decided to go with the guys he um, wanted to go with in in the um, very important times of that game. 
Anyways, on to Brown. Fantastic game by some of the Brown Bears. Especially, I don't want to butcher his name. But, let's, let's call him Nana. Nana, what a fantastic game from him. Uh, 20 points and 8 boards. Also, uh, Dan Friday had a great game. 21 points, uh, 4 boards, and 5 assists. In the first half, in the first half, uh, Paxson, uh, not even, not even going to try. Paxson had a great first half. Kind of got neutralized in the second half. With Caleb Love really stepping up on him on defense. So that's a really good sign there. He had 14 points majority of that being in the first half. And um, <clears throat> Cooley off the bench had some pretty big shots as well. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below about Carolina's second game under Hebrew Davis and going 2-0 on the season. Please like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do all that YouTube stuff, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.